A warm welcome to one and all present here. On behalf of Dr. MGR Educational Research Institute University, I'm extremely happy to welcome all of you for this national level webinar on discussing issues related to 12th BRIC Summit. This program is hosted by Dr. MGR Educational Research Institute in association with R uh, Russian Cultural Center for Science and Culture and the Peninsula Sorry, I had some issue. And the Peninsula Foundation. It is indeed a really a matter of proud because the participants of today's program belong to all the fraternities like engineering and technology, arts, science, humanities, the medicine, and the dental fraternities. Since our university have got courses related to all these, we are proud to say that today's webinar is attended by all the students and faculty of our universities and outside. On behalf of our university, I extend a warm welcome to all the dignitaries present for today's webinar. Now, I invite Mr. Roglev Gennady, Director, Russian Center of Science and Culture, Chennai, to welcome the gathering. Over to you, sir. Yes, good, uh, good evening, everyone. Dear guests, uh, dear participants of this uh, webinar, uh, as I told you, it's uh, a pleasure to speak about the activities of BRICS, raising billions of people living in different countries and continents. Discussing the 12th summit here in India, we should also feel proud that both of our countries, Russia and the India, are members of this uh, organization, which tries to build the relations of a global multilateral world where the interests of all states and peoples are observed in balance and harmony. I think the significance of BRICS will grow in all their fields, including politics, uh, economy, making our world more tractable and just. Uh, I would like to give a floor to my colleague, uh, Mr. Anton Chernov, uh, the Consul of Russian Federation in South Indian Chennai. Please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for me, it is a great pleasure to to have a speech at the front of such prominent participants. Uh, I would say that this year has been very difficult and unpredictable for all of us, and as well as for BRICS countries. The world is facing the coronavirus pandemic. And this required the adoption of extraordinary measures in all countries. Thus, the topic chosen for the BRICS summit of this year was quite broad and covered matters that dealt with expanding the strategic partnership between the member countries for the sake of global stability and security, as well as fostering innovative growth of the economies. This year, the Russian Federation presided over BRICS. I would say that 130 events were organized, including some 25 ministerial meetings. Many of them had to take place online. Our current priority is to coordinate collective BRICS measures to combat the pandemic, improve collaboration between our epidemiological services, and protect the lives and health of our citizens. And let me suggest that BRICS countries are in a better position. In testimony, I'd like to remind you that the UFA declaration, which was adopted five years ago, included an agreement to work together to prevent the spread of infectious diseases 
including novel coronaviruses. Pursuant to that agreement, the BRICS countries created an early warning system for infectious disease outbreaks, which we could use during the COVID-19 pandemic. The BRICS countries promptly responded to the disease outbreak and took practical measures to combat the pandemic. I would like to point out that the Russian Direct Investment Fund has signed agreements with our Brazilian and Indian partners on clinical tests of the Sputnik V vaccine and with pharmaceutical companies in China and India on the production of uh, this vaccine, not only for our own use, but for the third countries. We have registered a second coronavirus vaccine in Russia, Epivac, it is named Epivac Corona, and the third one is in the works. The Russian Federation favors the establishment of the BRICS Vaccine Research and Development Center. New, now, a few words about economy. This year, the pandemic forced each of our countries to take emergency measures to support national industries, finance, and the social sphere, to revive their economies and return them to a trajectory of sustainable growth. So the role of the new development bank, it is bank within BRICS, is very important. The bank has reserved $10 billion to combat the pandemic while its overall portfolio of investment project now exceeds 20 billion. As many as 62 large projects are already in the pipeline, in BRICS, in the BRICS countries. A regional branch of the bank will soon open in Moscow to implement lending, lending programs across the Eurasian space. Despite of the pandemic, the five countries are enhancing cooperation in science, technology and innovation. The BRICS Network University is up and running. The boys have held the BRICS math competition for school children this year, along with contests for young scientists and innovators and their research projects. Their coverage is truly impressive, from ocean and polar research to astronomy and artificial intelligence. Experts from the five countries carry out joint energy research as well. And uh, they have been prepared on the projected development of fuel and energy sectors in the BRICS countries until 2014. Sorry, 2014. So, dear colleagues, unfortunately, international terrorism and drug trafficking continue to pose serious threats to our countries and cybercrime as well and this have great expanded each, uh, its reach. We are witnessing dangerous destabilizing trends in the Middle East and North Africa. The armed conflicts in Libya and Yemen are continuing. This is still a lot to be done to bring about a political settlement in Syria, and the risks of escalation persist in Iraq, Lebanon, Afghanistan, and in the Persian Gulf. It is highly satisfying that the BRICS countries have been closely coordinating their efforts on current international and regional issues concerning terrorism. A policy document, the BRICS counter-terrorism strategy was signed on the sidelines of the summit which took place in Moscow a few, a few days ago. The BRICS countries are expanding their coordination on combating drug trafficking and corruption as well as an international information security. So colleagues, uh, this is what I would like to say in conclusion. This coming January, our Indian friends will be taking over the BRICS chairmanship. And for sure, our Indian colleagues will add new interesting projects and ideas to cooperate between our, two, uh, between our five countries. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your inspiring and generous words. Now, moving on to the program. Now, I invite 
our dynamic vc madam you, dr s geeta lakshmi to give the inaugural address welcome madam thank you uh, thank you all for inviting me for this uh, uh, national level webinar on uh, discussing issues related to 12th bricks uh, meet uh, by dr mgr education and research institute uh, uh, deemed university uh, under the chairmanship of our ac shanmugam and president uh, mr ac arun kumar who has been the driving force uh, of this uh, uh, whole university uh, i should thank the faculty of engineering and technology first year btech uh, and the office of the international uh, relations uh, uh, on this occasion of the national webinar uh, and the resource speaker uh, uh, mr a. chanau council for russian federation in chennai mr muttu kumar uh, chief editor trinity mr manivanan uh, the professor and head of the department of politics and public administration university of madras air marshal m madhiswaran chairman and founder of the peninsula foundation uh, mr shri alidayan manikam uh, ex ambassador of india to in, uh, finland so on this occasion i would like like uh, this bricks uh, has been uh, a very good program where we have to analyze uh, um, uh, what can be done how well can it be done so i am immensely delighted to know that this first year btech and the office of the international has made this possible with the russian center for science and uh, techno uh, and culture and peninsula foundation for this uh, organizing this program uh this indeed is purely a multidisciplinary approach in making all the students and faculty understand the highlights of brics summit 2020 as all of us know brics brazil russia india china and south africa summit was held in november 17 2020 the theme of the 12th brics summit is global stability shared security and innovative growth in this pandemic period the global stability is much needed one right now to sustain it in international way as a growing country india must show and will show its stability in innovation grow of growth and security successful growth strategies include products of engineering marketing leadership design and product management a growth strategy is a plan of action that allows one to achieve a higher level of market share that is currently available india highlighted the issue of creditability and effectiveness of the institutions which are important for global governance and urged other brics members for their support india introduced atmanirbhar bharat or the self reliant campaign to its brick partners india highlighted that the said campaign is based on self reliant and resilient india and it can act as a force multiplier for the global economy in the post covid 19 world which we are at it under this campaign india delivered essential medicines to more than 150 countries because of its capability of indian pharma industries as well as engineering products which has been made, made in india has also exported uh, into many countries so in this context i appreciate the departments conducting this webinar in the crucial time of covid 19 affecting uh, pa the pandemic that time involving all the departments including ent as it involves the services of engineer and management people it is also con co it's a coincidence that our university offers entrepreneurship orientation during the first year of the study of engineering and technology students and this programs will be useful to the entrepreneurial aspirants during their course of study so i should thank the department of ent and the international uh, affairs uh, Uh, and the others in the team who had brought this as possible on this day thank you one and all and also the resource persons
डॉक्टर सिरिल राज ओवर टू यू सर I think sir is having some connectivity problem. So let sir join. Hello. 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 Subhashri. Doctor Subhashri. Hello. Doctor Subhashri. Am I audible? Sir. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Ah, hello. Ah. Shall I continue? Hello. Hello, madam. Upon now, am I audible? Sir, you are audible, sir. No, I am audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, dear uh, participants. Uh, first of all, I would sir, like to are... thank. Hello. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the Cultural Center of uh, Russian Federation. for uh, providing such a wonderful opportunity for our university to host uh, this very important discussion uh, as already known uh, to everybody the brics nation has got a population of around 40 percentage of the globe and then again if you see the gdp uh, in terms of uh, gwp uh, again uh, 27 percentage of uh, the gwp of uh, the the entire world is coming only from uh, this brics nation if you see the another statistics uh, we are uh, spending around 400 billion dollars towards our defense uh, spending as already spoken by the previous speakers this crucial time the entire world is reeling under uh, the the pandemic covid 19 so the entire population of the globe need to be vaccinated so especially uh, uh, the uh, economies like uh, russia china india uh, we have to play a very important role in uh, rolling out uh, uh, that uh, vaccine uh, stock uh, to the entire uh, world community so definitely uh, there should not be any conflict among uh, our uh, uh, brics uh, nation uh, especially uh, the ongoing uh, uh, problems between uh, china and then uh, our country uh, uh, say uh, i mean it is escalating uh, too much of uh, uh, tension uh, and then a uh, lot of uh, setbacks also uh, rather uh, if the two uh, i mean if the brics uh, con country uh, concentrate on uh, Uh, development uh, as already uh, spoken by uh, the previous speaker the ndb bank uh, which is going to come with 100 billion dollars if uh, that uh, ndb bank concentrate on uh, uh, bring i mean uh, helping uh, entrepreneurs across the five countries brics country so definitely uh, uh, the, the per capita income of uh, uh, the, the brics um, country people nuclear will definitely rise and then uh, so this will finally i mean uh, bring um, a good uh, uh, wealth uh, to all the citizens also then at the same time uh, there are uh, well known um, uh, education system being uh, practiced across um, all these uh, 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 brics countries 
especially uh, with the strong uh, science and uh, mathematics foundation from uh, russia as well as a strong education system being followed from uh, india so uh, if uh, a free credit transfer system is being implemented across all the uh, educational institutions across uh, the brics country uh, so definitely uh, we can allow uh, uh, young uh, students uh, who are uh, passing out from uh, higher education institutions to move across uh, to these uh, five countries among the five countries may enable uh, uh, new ventures uh, to be um, initiated uh, across then again uh, uh, there should be a balanced uh, 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 trade uh, uh, i mean balanced trade activities also so uh, respecting uh, the interest of uh, each country also so definitely uh, there should not be escalation of trade war uh, are in direct or indirect trade war against uh, the i mean the, the fellow members so if these things are taken care uh, so definitely uh, uh, by uh, another 5 uh, to 10 years uh, the brics country will be the uh, the superpower uh, uh, of uh, uh, the world order so the uh, and then again one more uh, uh, agenda should also be included uh, so all the brics uh, country should also be the permanent member of uh, uh, the even um, security council also so if we work uh, uh, definitely in these line uh, so uh, it will be uh, in the interest of uh, all the five nations so for this uh, i hope uh, the participants uh, uh, will have a lot of deliber uh, deliberations about uh, uh, how to improve uh, uh, the brick uh, activities thanks a lot for providing such a wonderful opportunity thank you Thank you, sir. That was really inspirational. Now, I invite Mr. Manivandan, Professor and Head, Department of Political and Public Administration, University of Madras, to address on the topic BRICS and Civilizational Quest for Equity and World Order. Welcome, sir. Uh, Madam Vice Chancellor, uh, Mr. Kennedy, Air Marshal Mateswaran, sir, Mr. Muthukumar, Mr. Serral, and other distinguished, and Cherno, and other distinguished members of this, uh, of the panel and the organizers of this event, and other panel, the, and other participants. I take great pleasure in joining you for this discussion on the uh, BRICS and the as the topic that suggests has been suggested here for uh, from my side is on the um, civilizational quest and the uh, civilizational quest for a world order and in fact uh, the first thing that I want to lay before you is the uh, when this organization was formed or established about 11 years ago and the original aim of the BRICS was the establishment of an equitable, democratic, multipolar world order. And uh, so I repeat that the original aim of BRICS was the establishment of an equitable, democratic and multipolar world order. This is very interesting. Uh, in a time as in in the new uh, unfolding of a new uh, millennium and the uh, century, 21st century, and countries like Russia, China, India, and uh, coming forward, and subsequently like uh, followed by South Africa and Brazil, and in fact, it was Russia, Russian former, um, the Russian, pre the, the current president, who was then the uh, president at the same time and uh, many terms ago, he made a very interesting reference about a multipolar world. And the many interesting references that about that India and China are civilizational states. But we also believe, and we from India also believe that Russia is a civilizational state too, and a civilizational state, and a, 
a pioneering um, civilization, culture, and society, and in the Erosian, Erosian framework of understanding of politics and society as well. And then, what is that about China and uh, a civilizational uh, state in itself, and India, and seeking about um, a global equity in world order? And uh, traditionally, the world order has always been the, the Occidental world. I mean, when I say the Occidental world is that, the non-Western world, the Southern Hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere has largely been overlooked, neglected, or not been inclusive, included into this worldview of the, the power system in international relations in the last, say, three or 400 years. And uh, in the why say 300, 400 years is that, and while we do believe that we are ancient cultures and in societies and civilizations, and all these countries that are included as part of this debate itself. And then in the last, say, 150 years, and this world order model has also been very Western. And uh, when we say the very Western is that, very Occidental, very Occidental and very Western. And then the non-Western or, or an alternative framework of international politics needed to be defined. And then this has to be done and by countries like India, China, and uh, Russia, and Brazil, and South Africa. And this makes a very, very interesting quest for about, like, you know, if you look at about Russia is already uh, a permanent power in the security of uh, the United Nations Security Council system. And China is also a power as a permanent um, state, enjoys the permanent status. But country like India and South Africa, South Africa, they said about in 1980s and 90s, the world's um, looked at South Africa is that um, it's, going, it's going to be the next century is going to be the African century. But the African century did not arrive. The African century did not arrive, 21st century. And uh, this was spoken in the 1990s when Nelson Mandela became free and uh, South Africa became a post-apartheid society. And only then it revealed about not only the contradictions, the deep, the divide in the world power system. And then the Brazil, and Brazil is no less of an influential country in South and Central America, South America. And uh, Brazil, and when you look at this economy of these countries, and as well as the, uh, the social stability, the social issues, and the cultural dynamism, and all these countries are like, you know, are in quest of um, a power transition, a power transition. Like, you know, two of them, although they enjoy a status as a permanent power, but they do understand there is something intrinsic in the working of the power system in international relations. And as a transatlantic, and as well as an Occidental and Western and Anglo-Saxonic power system. So like, you know, so there are a very fundamental issues in this entire working of international relations. And uh, so I place this quest about the civilizational quest of India, China, Russia, and Brazil and South Africa as one of the foremost concerns of the, the multipolar and multicultural and uh, what we call as the very diverse uh, power system. So this is the first and foremost thing. And then in terms of um, how do we take this forward is that, and uh, not just simply by asking that you know, India, India and uh, Brazil and South Africa should become the permanent power. We are not simply asking that. We are also asking that the international econ economic system uh, should, have, should go, undergo a reform. And then like, you know, international political structure has to undergo a change. Then we are talking about in terms of what we call in the, the power sharing, because there has to be a, uh, it is not about a global divide. And we are talking about the uh, global a shared responsibility or like, you know, very uh, uniquely expressed by His Holiness Dalai Lama as the universal responsibility. So we have to see this, um, despite the contradictions and conflicts and change and uh, the issues that we have and between us, say, for instance, if you take the case of China and India, and we may compete, we may have a contradictions, we may have conflicts, but at the same time, and if we see that the longer 
inside, the longer perspective in our um, cultural worldview. And we have so much to share. We have so much to contribute. And so is with Russia. And like, you know, so is with uh, Brazil and with South Africa. Now, I, I look at Brazil as a representative of the, the South American, what you call the other continent and the American continent itself. And then the Americas are genuinely represented by the, uh, the, the other half. And then you need a voice for this world. I mean, I literally use the word, the world, not just about the uh, North America as United States and Canada, but also the Central and South America, it needs a voice. And then virtually, like, you know, if you take the case of um, South Africa or like, you know, uh, the voice of Africa has to be in the United Nations, has to be not only in the United Nations as a, um, just as a voting forum or in the General Assembly or in the Security Council or in the specialized agencies. But more importantly, how the international relations is being steered in, uh, in the multilateral power system. So I find that BRICS today, as one of the distinguished speakers has mentioned, that from now, the next 10 years, and BRICS should, I mean, I don't see that as a superpower, but it should become a model organization of economic cooperation, of a cultural and civilizational understanding, and a non-Western and an alternative paradigm in international relations, like in 1947 to 1970s, that what India and the non-aligned movement represented to the world, and which absolutely changed, transformed the ground about United Nations and the international politics. And I see that BRICS can steer this, but with power and influence. And because in, in the politics of the world, the power and influence comes from the stability and about collective and common interests, and then the shared responsibility of peace and cooperation. And uh, so I, uh, I, I advocate and I believe that the BRICS nation understand that in order to change the world, that we have to change certain um, inherent uh, paradigm that like setbacks that we have and set aside our contradictions and then uh, build a world in which we are deeply connected and also provide a sustainable and a stable alternative. And that pro brings forth a multipolar system where there is an equity, where there is a shared responsibility, where there's a collective security and a global peace. And uh, I, I, I put forth this as a, um, a worldview for the BRICS nations and for the future of the BRICS movement itself, a civilizational quest. And I want to thank some of some here with a very humble thanks and gratitude for giving me this opportunity to join you for the discussion. Thank you, thank you one and all. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes. Thank you. Am Please I audible? Yes. Now, now you're, yeah, yeah. you're audible. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, sir. Thank you thank, for thank spending you. a valuable time with us and uh, sharing you. many important points about BRICS. I think it will be thank very you. useful for the student community. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Ma now I invite Mr. Muthu Kumar, Chief Editor, the Trinity Mirror and President BRICS Generation to address a gathering on the topic, future role of BRICS. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Respected Council of Russian Federation, respected Vice Chancellor, dignitaries, and dear participants. I'm very sorry I'm in a place where the my internet connectivity is not that great. 
So kindly have, <clears throat> bear with me on this. <clears throat> I hope I am audible. Okay, as this 2020 comes to an end, that means one fifth of this century is over and the world is still yawning for a political stability, global economic recovery and all due to the current COVID-19 pandemic. It has shaken the very foundation of humanity, cutting across all geographical spheres. Few days ago, BRICS foreign ministers met by a video conference led by Russian minister with Russia in the capacity as the current chair. They discussed how to push economic growth among the member nations. In the immediate future, BRICS leaders will focus on significant complicated issues relating to geopolitical, to socio-economic sphere, as well as transformation strategies in the global landscape of the 21st century. The meeting of the foreign ministers also adopted a working document that will further reinforce the position and development of this BRICS group. Over the past decade, the group has proved to be relevant well-respected format for global cooperation. BRICS countries maintain solidarity in strengthening collective principles in global affairs. They advocate respect for sovereignty, sovereign equality of all nations, and are deeply concerned over the conflicts that are emer emerging. And they have resolved, they feel it can all be resolved through peaceful means. In the coming week, the BRICS calendar is very interesting. From November 29th, BRICS Youth Summit is there. And of course, in, uh, from December 3rd, there is this meeting of BRICS ministers and head of departments for youth and followed by meeting of BRICS Serpas to set the agenda for the coming years. And on 10th of December, foreign policy planning dialogue among the BRIC foreign ministers will be held. All these interactions will help in strengthening multilateral principles in global politics and promoting shared interests of BRICS countries. The potential of the New Development Bank or the BRICS Bank has been highlighted in various forums, even in this current debate which is happening now. Well. We all know its immense potential, but what is happening? What are all mooted? Where are we moving forward in this BRICS bank? Fundamental issues. There is a proposal to integrate and develop a new payment gateways and become a viable alternative to the US American dollar account hegemony. The BRICS tax and custom system is planned and if it is implemented well, can be a new platform for global prosperity. BRICS can form a network, university activities and forge scholarly alliances for the benefit of modern day youth to access the latest knowledge and tap resources in terms of advanced technologies. It will definitely lay the foundation for a smarter new world. Well, with India's continued economic growth and scientific thinking, it is on way to become a world's most powerful country. Strategies of the BRIC economic partnerships are all coming at a crucial jun juncture for an emerging economy like India. BRICS cooperation is aimed at complementing and strengthening existing bilateral and multilateral relationships between member states. India is definitely going to benefit from the outcome of these summits in the coming weeks as the Russia's presidency comes to an end and India will be taking over very soon. I'm sure it will contribute to promoting global economic recovery, reduce potential risks in the international financial markets and increase economic growth among the members of BRICS. India is presently a politically very stable and a strong leadership is there. 
it has not been involved i mean india is not involved in any major international conflicts be it with european union or japan or us or russia it has fostered a peaceful relationship with these world powers and global players to an extent with the rise of emerging economies there is a need for political stability among the market reforms for success well india has it all in good measure at this crucial juncture the future of brics looks promising and pushing a greater global distribution of power and it will be a big push for india's aspiration as it spreads its wing to climb higher in a global economic sphere or to become a permanent member in un lastly sputnik from russia and assurances from china to cooperate and uh, you know save us save the world from this covid pandemic china has actually assured cooperation with south africa and india in the coming days their control measures combined with russia's innovative strategies is a positive sign that brics as a group can emerge as a powerful forum for multilateral cooperation as well as overcoming bilateral issues i'm thankful for this opportunity and it's great hearing to all your presentations thank you very much thank you sir thank you for familiarizing us with uh, many points related to brics thank you thank you once again sir now we have one more eminent personality with us shri aladian manikam ex ambassador of india to finland to know more about him aladian manikam joined indian foreign service ifs in 1980 before that he worked for iob as an officer for 2 years he did his bcom from st xavier college palayam kottai and mcom from loyola college chennai His first assignment abroad was at Embassy of India Cairo in 1982 where he studied Arabic as his compulsory foreign language later he was posted as commercial secretary at Indian embassies in Muscat Oman Budapest Hungary and Damascus Syria He was assigned the Ministry of External Affairs from 94 to 96 in 1996 He was assigned permanent mission of India to United Nations New York. In 1999 he joined Embassy of India Jakarta Indonesia. He worked as deputy high commissioner in Indian High Commission Canberra Australia and Colombo. From 2008 he was he, he worked as joint secretary and headed Gulf Division and Hajj Division. He was appointed as chief passport officer in 2009 and during his tenure he set up seven pilot projects. He has many more roles to his CV. I think time is not going to be enough for us. Now it is over to you Sri Aladi Manikka. Welcome sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for the uh, the opportunity uh, uh, organized by the uh, mgr institute and the russian culture center and uh, i was uh, very delighted to hear the uh, different views uh, expressed by previous speakers uh, i have been part and partial of all these international forums so Uh, these forums really uh, uh, when you work inside you see a different picture when you work see from outside a different picture but what are the founder fundamental <coughs> india is uh, historically uh, in a place where we have been always the attraction uh, it brings me to one of the most important memory i have when i joined in 1980 as part of our training program we have to call on the prime minister as a group we had 20 young officers we had the opportunity of meeting madam indira gandhi was the prime minister uh, it was a monologue she spoke to us uh, very interestingly she said look we became independent 
and we wanted to develop. By then, the world was divided into East and West. We went to the West for help. All the help came with the sting attached. They asked us to join NATO or CENTO. But when we went to the East Bloc countries led by Russia, they came and willingly they set up our industries. Uh, one country built the steel industry, another East Bloc country built the agriculture, another built the dam. So the foundation was built by them. So over a period of time, 60s, 70s, uh, in the 80s, uh, our economic relationship became much closer to the Eastern Bloc countries. So we were always criticized by the Western countries that we are pro-East Bloc, which was not the case, because they were willing to help us with their condition attached. So we found our solace in NAM. We played a very important role. And our voice was very, very solid and was heard everywhere. It was a long history. So Russian Federation really, I mean, the USSR at that time, helped in a big way in creating the foundation, what we have. Today, we may see that what we had was not correct or we would have had it different, but foundation was laid. From that, we built. This is very important to understand. Uh, then, my most important assignment was in Syria and Hungary and, and uh, Oman. You will be surprised that in each one of these countries, India is seen as a cradle of culture, a lot of imagination and expectations about India. That's India. 96 in UN was an eye opener for me. I felt very small because there we have to get vote for our issues. We had problems on many issues, but uh, you have to have support from international community, countries. And the first day was in the day when we lost the election for the UN Security Council, non-permanent membership with uh, Japan. We got 42, Japan got 140. Uh, it was a big setback. The next election, we worked hard. We got 140 in the next uh, uh, Economic Social Council. So that is the UN is the forum where most of the international dynamics debate takes place. So to gather support to uh, develop a close relationship, if we are not able to achieve what we wanted in countries like India and uh, other large countries, found these forums outside to develop our own uh, economic, cultural, and sometimes uh, to say uh, a block. Uh, but it is not like the military block we have in NATO or in anybody else. So, <clears throat> 99, 98 was a, 98 was the most crucial period. We had a nuclear test. That is the time we were, there was an attempt to pass a resolution in the UN Security Council. Uh, a strong resolution against India. The country which came to our help was Russia. At the time, the current uh, foreign minister, Mr. Lavrov, was the permanent representative of Russian Federation. And I was a counselor political. So I used to go and meet him and his colleagues. And they used to help us in giving us a sort of a informal way what's going on. And we lobbied very hard and diluted the resolution and it became a chapter six resolution, not seven, because seven is for enforceable. We would have been in a very, very difficult situation. But Russia took the lead and the other countries, I don't want to name, they were on the side. When they saw Russia's stubbornness, France came and uh, uh, then the um, usual British and the US, they were on one side and China was pushing us very strongly to Punish India at that time, 98. That was a lesson we learned. And who is our friends, who is not our friends? That is past, but we made a very strong progress economically, and we were able to come up uh, to a level where people started looking at India. So coming back to the brick, I would like everyone to look at from this point of view. These are all forums 
you have NAM, you have G20, you have ASEAN, you have SARC, you have uh, APEC. There are so many forums which are formed. They're trying to identify uh, areas uh, where they can try to gain uh, advantages and benefit. But I would say the Russians stayed with us wherever we are. They have always been uh, very, very uh, great, uh, very, very helpful to India and our point of view. And uh, today we are in a different global uh, geopolitical situation. It's a different world than what it was 2006. Now we need the BRICS BRIC, uh, cooperation much more than what we needed in 2006. Uh, because of the various situation, which is, I don't want to specify it. Uh, it offers an economic forum. Uh, what we do uh, in, uh, in a forum like this, when there is no visual agreement on issues, we go into sports, education, culture, and science and technology, and then the ministers meet and try to create cooperation. Last year, I remember uh, we had Brazil came as a big way as a, one of the partner for the 26th January, and uh, they had done very well in trying to open up their economy to India. South Africa, we have a traditional relationship, and it's a very important country for us. We have a large Indian uh, origin population there. I have spoken about Russia uh, more than uh, what is required, but I always believe Russia is our friend. They will continue to be our friend. China is a country with whom we lived for years, and uh, we never had a problem except 1962. Now there is a new problem coming up. This is a new reality, but we believed that there is a space in the world for both India and China to coexist and compete at the same time. At the same time, we have to uh, uh, live with uh, our differences and try to solve, our, solve the problems. So what these BRICS summit used to offer so far, on the sideline, we used to organize meetings between the heads of state, bilateral discussions. And those meetings were found to be very, very important and very useful. And it used to be one to be, I had to organize when I was in Australia, when I was in Jakarta, ASEAN summit, I used to go and participate. Of course, the New Year three, New York three years I spent in the UNJ, that's a separate, I can talk for hours, what all happened. But uh, these forums, offers an excellent opportunity to bring the world leaders uh, and you are together in one day and you are able to meet in one go for leaders. And, uh, you know, then it is left to us, diplomats and the bureaucrats to carry forward. Uh, this time, unfortunately, it did not take place. Uh, it was because of the COVID. Uh, otherwise, we would have had most of our issues with China resolved. And I hope that uh, in the coming years, uh, uh, we will be able to uh, bridge our uh, uh, differences, issues with China. Uh, media has been hyping it a lot uh, uh, because of the modern world, uh, modern time, you know, everything is a breaking news. Uh, it was happening in the past. Now it is known to everybody, but uh, it should not perturb everybody. We are not, we are responsible countries. Uh, we have to coexist, cooperate, BRICS. Uh, is a very good forum in which all our security related issues, whether terrorism or economic cooperation, whether we can jointly develop a vaccine, we can share these things. These things can be discussed. Uh, despite our uh, differences, I mean, the last summit, uh, we have agreed to have so many other meetings, so it will go on. And uh, I will stop here and uh, because uh, I've spoken a lot, I wanted to speak a lot about uh, the pivotal role. Russia has played, and even today we are having a webinar uh, on this issue, and that also in southern part of India, where I come from. And I was delighted to uh, hear some of the speakers. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing your memories with us, and also telling us the importance of BRIC Forum for India. Now, next, I would like to invite Air Marshal M. Madheshwaran, Chairman and Founder, the Peninsula Foundation, 
to address the gathering on the topic BRICS and the post COVID world. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yeah. Thank you uh, for the MJ University. More importantly, the Russian Cultural Center uh, for having put this together, organized uh, this event. It's a great pleasure uh, to be here, and particularly as on behalf of the Peninsula Foundation. Uh, uh, as the ambassador pointed out, I think uh, uh, you know the. Uh, importance of India-Russia relationship and the strength of India-Russia relationship, both at the strategic level and at the, uh, you know, various uh, domains in which we work very closely together and cooperate, is extremely, you know, uh, important, very strong, and particularly in the military side where the defense relationship has been one of the uh, core areas under which the relationship has evolved over the last half a century plus. And that will, you know, it will always remain, as the ambassador pointed out, it will be a very strong relationship between the two countries. That strategic partnership that exists between Russia and India is vital ingredient in the way BRICS will actually function, evolve, function, and, and uh, contribute to the, uh, you know, the global uh, governance uh, process that's emerging in the post-COVID world. And uh, BRICS is extremely important in my opinion, particularly we are at a phase, we are at a time, uh, particularly after the disruption that the COVID has brought about, has exposed the inadequacies in the existing international cooperation mechanisms, uh, the, uh, uh, the global architecture that has evolved over the last 300 years, which is skewed towards uh, Western dominance. And never before is it more important uh, uh, then at this time that the international cooperation on the basis of e equality, on the basis of, uh, you know, genuine cooperation amongst countries to share, you know, development, to share their strengths, to share, uh, you know, uh, science and technology is never more important than now. And therefore, in, in, in that context, I think BRICS is, has a very vital role in addressing uh, the transformation that's underway in global governance and international institutions. Uh, the world we live in today is, is still a post-1945 architecture, heavily skewed towards, you know, the, uh, uh, the domination that's evolved over 300 years uh, in a Euro-American centric system. And now that the world is uh, an architecture of 200 countries, independent sovereign countries. And uh, while many say that the great power, power you know, race and great power, power, power politics has come back, uh, I think we need to look at how to rationalize global governance, strengthen international institutions, and bring about development, support development to those countries that need development assistance in without strings and, and in a more proactive manner. That's where BRICS comes in, once again. Uh, I believe, uh, you know, the despite differences between India and China, and maybe uh, you know, the, uh, amongst the members on certain issues, the larger dimension of global governance must actually influence the cooperation amongst the members of BRICS, and and that should be kept in mind at all times. So, what are the areas in which you know we need to work? One is international security, which in, uh, instead of getting into narrow national a nationalistic, you know, power politics influence decision making. I think we need to look at international security away from the dimension that's been propagated over the last half a century from a US dominant perspective. I think we need to look at it. And that's where India, Russia can lead the way. China can be, you know, uh, can be brought in. China has its own, you know, approach. They've always opposed our membership in NSG, etc. I think these can be turned around and Brazil and South Africa will always be supportive of, you know, the leadership that can be provided by, you know, uh, the BRICS members by talking to each other and, and leading the way in the global governance. Uh, uh, the, there was a mention about the, 
a economic pillar being dominated by the dollar denominated uh, you know economic system and that needs to get rationalized that is again moving in that direction so one of the most important things is that brics has set up its bank which is actually not a direct challenge to the bretton woods uh, institutions but it is complementary and actually it's become more popular amongst the developing countries and therefore that's one way to send out a message to the world that you need to actually rationalize the system and bring about you know a better approach to you know assisting development in the world second you need to address is the security angle international security angle which means reform of the un security council must india has been a very active proponent of rationalization of the international security architecture and brics can play a major role in that and this is where again despite the differences between india and china india and russia can actually lead the way and bring the other members of the brics in the fold you know along with our approach in which the un security council if it's reformed to look at the global system of the 21st century becoming truly representative of the world's interest rather than one segment's you know interest it can play a major role in ensuring better peace lesser conflicts and lesser interventions and 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 a lesser propensity to use sanctions at the drop of a hat to actually punish nations so these are all, these are all areas in which i think uh, you know uh, we can uh, you know cooperate in a, in, in a much better way uh the world of post 1945 if you really look look at it how it's been architecture is also citing security uh many denial regimes have actually been well established by the leaders of technology to ensure technology control remains with them indirectly the technology control allows them to dominate global markets and therefore indirectly they also control economy towards the towards their advantage and that has been very well uh, you know articulated by many academics and researchers that the international system that's been structured post 1945 the three pillars security pillar the political pillar and the economic pillar or technological pillar and the economic pillar are all skewed towards dominance of established leaders in the technology system and technology is moving very rapidly thanks to the kind of transformation that's taking place Uh, uh due to digitization and disruptive technologies like 3d printing and 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 uh, you know artificial intelligence etc china has shown the way on how it can actually leapfrog and challenge the hegemonic dominance through denial systems that exist and there is a un you know uh, article that uh, that actually uh, was um, you know passed in 1950s where it becomes incumbent on countries not to deny technologies to other countries which, when it means that technology is useful for their development but it's rarely followed and th these are areas in which you know we we need to actually study it carefully ultimately the brics will need to become rule makers of global governance and not through a conflict uh, conflictual mode but more through you know defining the approach that we take explaining the logic making most of the world see our process and because these five are also like professor ram manivan has said these five nations also wield significant power and influence that power and influence must be used proactively to change the existing rules and regulations to make them more rational for better global governance and that is possible so that brings us to the current you know issue between india and china i believe in an international system of the 21st century neither can china do without india nor can india do without china and therefore while we have our problems at the border which can be resolved through a dialogue and through a process of better understanding there is always a competition between nations that no one can deny that part but i think if you really want to Uh, look at economic development global cooperation india and china have to get their acts together they have to cooperate they are the they will be the leading economies by 2050 they will actually be the number 1 and number 2 uh, you know by 2050 2070 time frame and you cannot afford to have a conflictual relationship in this process and one of the ways in which uh, you know india can address this part is to collaborate with our you know established strategic partners like russia bring in 
you know, cooperation in a way that removes our technological vulnerabilities, creates adequate technological sovereignty for the nation, and cooperate towards the betterment of, you know, countries in the in the across the world for genuine development process rather than purely economic and commercial interests. And this is where global health, the pandemic has revealed the inadequacies of so many countries, particularly even developed countries like the US, the inadequacies of their state systems with respect to public health. This is where I suppose international institutions like WHO can actually be reformed, not be held to ransom by one nation or two nations, but cooperate more towards addressing a pandemic from a genuine global perspective. And, and, uh, and in that context, I think I'll close it here with, by stating that BRICS has a great responsibility. It will be, uh, it'll be unlike any other you know, regional groupings or any other organizations that we, we are seeing all across uh, since 1945. It has a great responsibility. And that fundamental responsibility is towards meeting how the global architecture needs to look in the you know, 21st century, maybe by you know 2030 and 40 time frame, and rationalizing the international governance, making it more equitable, getting the security architectures more representative of the international requirements, and of course, while there may be competition, I think the classic power politics and hegemony. Uh, competition should actually be replaced by a better cooperation led by BRICS in this world. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your in informative speech. On thank behalf you. of our university, I once again thank all the guests of honor, those who participated in today's webinar. Now, uh, our students, many of our students, young aspirants, they are very new to this uh, topic, uh, yet they were uh, watching very interestfully. Uh, one question has been posted by a participant. How will this submit help entrepreneurs for innovative growth? The theme of uh, this summit is uh, the security and innovative growth. So I think all the speakers uh, spoke about the entrepreneurs. So how this is going to help for innovative growth and to India? OK, can I say something? Hello. So, Shri, can you hear, hear me? I, I, I can't hear anybody. Okay, uh, innovative growth. I think, uh, like I mentioned in uh, in my statement, we are at a very interesting phase as far as uh, you know technology is concerned, and this is what. Uh, say again. As far as uh, you know, uh, uh, growth is concerned, uh, we have been over the last two hundred years. We've been through a process, what is known as an industrial revolution, uh, you know, led uh, or governed technological growth. And that had a certain pattern of technology developments. Uh, uh, most of you would have read Alvin Toffler's and uh, the third wave and, uh, you know, uh, uh, different eras of, uh, you know, uh, change, civilizational change, the agricultural era, uh, industrial revolution era, and now we are moving to knowledge era. Uh, the digital age, the, the importance of information and communication technologies, and of course, the kind of, uh, you know, capabilities and research and development that have come into play has now given a, 
a golden opportunity to countries like India and China has already demonstrated that to leapfrog over certain processes of development and 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 achieve higher levels of you know technological capabilities in various domains like uh, you know like three D printing, which is uh, disruptive technologies like artificial intelligence. So one of the ways in which the industrial age development has taken place is that people control databases and there is a certain you know sequential process of development the current opportunities that are available in, in different domains be it in you know whether it's genome editing whether it's in uh, you know uh, technology development for the military you are actually able to reverse the process of developing databases yourself uh, your 3d printing can actually put together the raw materials and and through that process you can actually play around with compositions and and you can actually test and quickly you know uh, get the results and and that experimental data development is available to you without even having access to what the other developed countries have built a database of over 100 years so here's a great opportunity and in that context innovation gets a big boost startups will get a big boost and you're seeing that already and and that is where i think you'll break new ground You'll break new ground in, in being able in being able to actually bring in new solutions to the problems that we face. Critical technologies have always been the uh, secret of a nation's uh, you know strength in terms of security, in terms of you know market access, global dominance, and those critical technologies today is possible. We are looking at an ability to actually get control over that. By ourselves, and that is where innovation will, uh, innovative solutions will be able to, uh, you know, give a fillip to our, our growth in a big way. For the wonderful uh, speech, sir. Uh, as I told you, uh, the students are much new to this uh, topic, uh, so there are no more queries. Now, I would like to thank all the chief guests, those who participated today. I invite Dr. R. Kausalya, Coordinator, Office of International Relations, to deliver the vote of thanks. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Subhashree ma'am. Uh, good evening. On behalf of Dr. MGR Educational and Research Institute University, Russian Center of Science and Culture, and the Peninsula Foundation, it gives me an immense pleasure to propose the vote of thanks. We thank our Honorable President Engineer ACS Arun Kumar sir for his constant support, guidance, and generous funding, which plays a significant role in, in organizing all the international programs. Thanks to our higher executives, VC Dr. S. Geeta Lakshmi Ma'am, Registrar Dr. C. B. Parnivel sir, Joint Registrar Dr. Jabrat sir, Joint Register Dr. Srulrat sir, for the immense support in organizing this webinar. Heartfelt thanks to Mr. A. Uh, a. H. Chonau, Consul of uh, Russian Federation in Chennai, Air Marshal M. Matishwaran, Peninsula Foundation, Mr. Muthukumar, Chief Editor of the Trinity Mirror, and Mr. Sri Aladian Manikam, Ex Ambassador of India to Finland, Mr. Manivanan, Professor and Head, Department of Politics. Politics Administration, sorry, Department of Politics and Public Administration, University of Madras. Special thanks to Mr. Rogalev Ganodi, sir, uh, Director, Russian Center of Science and Culture, for always remembering our uh, university and giving us a golden opportunity. And Mr. Basha, sir, of Russian Center of Science and Culture. And our Dean E. and S. Dr. Subhashree, ma'am, for their hard work, coordination in organizing this webinar and making it as a grand success. Thanks to Ms. Zaparna and Sarunan sir for the technical support and thanks to all the participants. Thank you one and all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you all the guests. Thank you for your interesting reports. Um, thank you all uh, our speakers. Uh, I would like to thank our main partners of uh, this uh, webinar. I would like to thank uh, Dr. MGR Institute and the Peninsula Foundation for helping us to organize this webinar. I would like to thank Mr. Mutukumar, uh, our old partner, phone partner, 
and also our last in partner, Mr. Manivanan and uh, Mr. Manikam. Thank you very much for your participation and thank you very much for your report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.